a nossa audiência uh, virtual novamente para esta discussão que nós temos tido sobre os filmes da Mostra 11. E é um prazer imenso para nós termos hoje o diretor do filme The Third Shore. I, Olá. I have... Olá. <laughs> I'm going to start again because I said everything in English, in Portuguese, I think, <laughs> which I do sometimes. This is a pleasure for me to be here um, again and uh, welcome our virtual audience, and in particular to welcome Fabian Remy, the director of this wonderful film, The Third Shore. Um, it is uh, one thing that I would like to say ahead of time. Please, those of you who are in the audience, prepare your questions. And um, we have Claudia Balbi, who is going to be our mediator. And at the same time, do look into our website because there are quite a few things there that we would like you to take a look and, um, and check. So, but without anything else, I would like to introduce a little bit Fabian, which is really um, for us a pleasure to have with us. Fabian mounted dozens of shorts, series, and features, such as uh, Rua Guaicurus from João Borges, uh, Nimuan da Ju by Tanya Naya, and uh, a series of, quite a few series, I think, um, but Hit Parade by Marcelo Caetano, and Nhochim Arte Presente by Pedro Urano, which was chosen as the best documentary series in the great prize of Brazilian cinema last year, 2019. So, uh, Terceira Margem is one of his um, wonderful features, uh, documentary, and uh, he is here tonight to discuss that with us. I also would like to introduce you to Claudia Balbi. Claudia was uh, born and raised in Sao Paulo. Uh, prior to uh, relocating to Chicago in 2004, she was a professor at the University of Sao Paulo. And um, she works on uh, technology industry, implementing solutions for academic libraries. She, um, her connection to the partners date way back, Partners of the Americas, which is the organization, the organization through which we do our master. Um, and it dates back to receiving a grant from, research, from for a research trip in Illinois, when she was still completing her graduate studies in Brazil. Uh, she is cur currently a member of our Illinois chapter of Partners of the Americas, and uh, she's on our board of directors. And welcome Claudia too. She's going Thank to you. moderate the session. All right, thanks. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, we can start, you know, somebody, uh, when we were preparing to moderate, you know, learning how to moderate uh, the session, uh, somebody gave me a very good tip, uh, which was uh, asking you guys uh, on the audience uh, your impressions, rather than asking you, do you have any questions, asking what your impressions were of this wonderful film. So uh, who would like to let us know what your impressions were? Are you ask, asking the audience? <laughs> yes, I am. Well, the impression of the film for me, for instance, I can start. 
was it it it, it is a, a really fabulous movie not only because of the photography but the theme of the movie and it is um such a something that i associate myself with very much but i'm not going to give it away because uh, i think most people have seen it or if they haven't seen it uh, fabian is going to discuss some of these aspects but uh, it is really something to to see what was happening at that time in our history when people started you know going towards the west and uh, what was done to you know to the indigenous people in the interior of Brazil. So for me, it, it's a marvelous film. It was enlightening, very much enlightening to me. Thank you, Adriani. So anybody there in the audience would like to let us know what your impressions were from watching the film? If you have watched it already, that being The people who are helping us are letting us know that uh, there's a little bit of delay. So your answers, folks in the audience, may take a little bit reaching us, which is fine. We'll wait. Or ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I can do that. Uh, so uh, I watched uh, the film, obviously, and uh, I would like to know, Fabiana, I, I got curious, uh, how did you first come in contact with the, the story of uh, João Cramura, the, the main character that's never there, but, you know, almost like the main character of the film, uh, as well as how did you meet Tinia, the present day character. And are you guys still in contact? Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation to talk about uh, the third shore. Uh, that's a long question because, you know, um, I spent almost um, uh, more than 15 years to, to, to make the film. And so um, it started all with. Um, a friend of mine who had a, a, an aunt uh, who lived in Luciara, which is a small city in uh, the center of Mato Grosso. Uh, and uh, she was the, the, the daughter of the founder of, the, of this town. And then she, she, she was a, a wonderful person. I mean, she, she told many, many stories, you know. And uh, one of these stories was uh, João Camura's uh, story. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, you know, I didn't really have a, um, a clear idea of what I really want to, to, to talk about, you know, and it wasn't, at, it wasn't even a, a film quest yet, you know, um, but then I started doing a lot of research in Rio, in the, in the Museu do Índio, um, it's a wonderful place uh, for, I mean, uh, uh, studying and uh, there's a lot of uh, footage, you know, archives, audiovisual archives. Mm -hmm. and, and so I start understanding, first of all, the, the, this, the occupation of this, this region, which is a very, it was a very um, unknown region, the heart of Brazil. And during the second war, there was this, this concern about um, occupying this place, not to let people from abroad invade, you know, there was this, mm -hmm. this, this fear. And then, um, and then, uh, then after some, after a while, I, I, I got interested by by Jean's story because it, it was it told a, a lot, I think, about this this uh, contact, you know, between uh, Brazilian society and the indigenous people who were there. It wasn't a desert deserted place, you know. There were there was many tribes there, and uh, and uh, so and, and there were many stories about. Um, not really conflicts. There was many. There were many conflicts as well. But also, uh, uh, people from the northeast of Brazil who who, who started uh, living there, settlers, you know, and who kind of lived 
uh, besides, for, for instance, the Karaja people in the, the Banana Wasteland on the, the river Araguaia. And so I, I, I saw that that's interesting, you know, a uh, story of mi mixing cultures. Mm -hmm. and, and then I started uh, uh, studying deeper the Zhong stories. Um, and at the time, I, I had a, a, um, a founding in France, you know, to do, to do more research. And so I, I, I went there a third time and I tried to meet João. And once I got there, I, I discovered that he, he was, he, he, died. He, he died a few, mm -hmm. it's, it's in the film. Yeah. <laughs> and so I say, wow, that, so I was really disappointed and sad. And I say, no, well, my, my, there's no more film, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to go back to Rio and forget everything. But after a while, you know, I, I still wanted to talk about that story, uh, but I didn't want to make a movie like an a, a, um, archive movie, you know, with mm -hmm. people talking about the past and showing uh, archives, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and, and while I was doing research, um, I, I met Tinia. And before even thinking of making the film with him, I, you know, we, we, we got friends and, <clears throat> and and we want we, we start talking about making some a project together and and one day i say well tinia no why don't we we, we think about the, the the story with uh, joan cramura because somehow you you have the kind of identical uh, uh, trajectory as in mm -hmm. english uh, but but the opposite somehow you know and um and he said, wow, yeah, that's interesting. And uh, I think the great thing about, I mean, documentary in life is, uh, is that it took a lot of years to make the film, but I got lucky, I think, to, 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 to wait so, such a long time because at the time we were shooting, uh, Tinia started thinking about going back to his tribe, you know? Mm -hmm. So he was very uncertain. He, he, he had a lot of doubts about that, you know. And, uh, and I, I think it's, it gave kind of a sense to the film. It gave, a, um, it was meaningful to him, I think, to do this quest, mm -hmm. you know, and for me as well. So, so that's it. We, we, we started, um, talk, um, I mean, doing research together and, and, and we did it. How and where did you meet Tinia? Yeah, Tinia, he, he lived in, uh, in Rio de Janeiro at the time, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. He spent um, uh, 30 years uh, in the Brasilia, then in Sao Paulo, where he studied at the USP, University of Sao Paulo. And then he went to Rio. And he had a very interesting work. He, he, he did presentations in front of uh, school uh, kids, you know, in front of a general audience and to, to kind of try to translate and to give more, um, to help people, non-indigenous people, to understand better mm -hmm. the, the complexity and the beauty and the poetry and, I mean, very positive aspects of his culture, you know, which is, which is wonderful. And I, I, when I met him, I, 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 mean, I had the chance to, to, to to watch him, you know, doing this, do this presentation. Uh, so he, he's a very, uh, but after, after a while, I think he, he, he kind of got tired, you know, he was missing his, his family and his tribe. And so he right. started thinking about going back. And, and during the, the process of the film, I, I really felt, and I think it's, it's a shame he's in here. I think he's in the, I tried to contact him, but he's in the Orikuri ritual. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think for him it was it was nice because he was thinking a lot about that, you know, about this um, the, the power. Of, I mean, the, the strengths of his his culture uh, and the, the the yeah, I think the importance right. of, of of going back to 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 to, to the, the tribe to the, the, the his his birthplace, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Fabian, uh, thank you for the answer. And yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to interrupt you now because while you were talking, we got a ton of questions. <laughs> so we have many questions to go through. 
So for your folks in the uh, you guys in the audience, I'll be going through the questions in the order they were received. Okay. So let me scroll up. And uh, the first question we got is from Barbara Block, uh, who uh, was, uh, you know, she wanted to uh, us to know that she knew nothing about the migration to the West. But the themes of living in the co in two cultures is what resonated with her. So a little bit of uh, what we were talking about before the live session started, right? Yeah. Uh, people like us uh, also live uh, between uh, two cultures. Uh, we also have a comment from uh, Tatiana Machado Griffin, who says, uh, I thought the movie was very moving. I am so removed from indigenous culture, being from Sao Paulo, and yet it is such an important part of history. From uh, Jesus Zinigues, uh, Jesus felt that the documentary was a very insightful film and the story is like no other that he had seen before. From uh, So as I roll along, uh, Fabian, please interrupt me at any point if you want to comment on the comments, okay? Uh, well, maybe uh, about the, the identity, I mean, the, the, the fact of being between two cultures uh -huh. would be interesting, sure. but I mean, uh, as, you, as you prefer, you know, you can. Okay, so uh, I'll go through the end of this list and okay. then we can go back to the business of living between two cultures. Right. So from Margaret Roter, uh, she says, I thought the film was one of the most interesting so far. An unusual presentation inviting a person with a similar history to conduct the interviews. Yeah, Margaret. <laughs> Uh, from Barbara Block, again, A Terceira Margem, why did you choose that name? Why did you choose that title? So maybe that's yeah. one we can return to as well. From Alice McLean, uh, there was something poetic about it as well. Uh, from Jesus, again, uh, are there other aspects of Juan, Juan's life? that you would have uh, liked uh, to display or to speak about, something that you did not cover in the documentary, uh, as well as uh, what were the difficulties that you had? Uh, what did you learn the most from working with the tribe? Okay. And, uh, also from Jesus, uh, what was the lesson or the concept you wanted the audience to learn uh, from the film? Uh, and finally, back to Barbara, uh, at the end of the film, uh, Tinia goes on a three month trip. Uh, did he stay? That's her question. But uh, if we want to go in order, maybe, you know, we can go up and start with the living between two cultures part. Yeah. Yeah. Can I interject just a minute? Um, I think for some people in the audience, I think most of the people have seen mm -hmm. the movie, but for some of those who may not have seen it, give us a very quick gist of what is the movie about? So that people really get into it and understand who Tinia is and who, um, you know, Juan is. Are you, are you asking me to? to... Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow, well, difficult, difficult. <laughs> <laughs> the, the movie is about, you know, um, two characters, two, two persons who um, cross a cultural um, frontier. I don't know if it's the right word, but um, so Tinia is a, is a, is a came from uh, the Funio tribe, which is a tribe that is in the northeast of Brazil, in the Pernambuco state. And uh, with 15 years old, he, he went to, the, this, to Brasilia. Uh, and he, he, well, as the movie tells it, he, he, he was 30, 30 years uh, living in the, in, the, in the cities like Brasilia, Sao Paulo, and Rio. And, uh, and João was, was uh, kidnapped and raised by the Kayapo 
uh, people uh, in the, the heart of uh, Mato Grosso state uh, at a time where the government was uh, starting uh, projects, co uh, colonizing projects. Um, and so he, he spent many years with the, the, the um, Bebengo Cre, because Kayapo is the, is the name, it's like the, not the, the real name, it was non-indigenous people who gave them this name, but the, their name is, the name of the tribe is Mebengo Cre. And so he, he, he spent a few years there and he, he was found by the, the Villas Boas brothers who were, um, who started contacting and pacifying uh, the tribes, so uh, to kind of try to reunite them in the Shingu uh, territory reservation, uh, because he, 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 well, at the time at least, they understood that uh, if the, these tribes, isolated tribes or half isolated tribes, had contact with the, the settlers and the people, the non indigenous people who were uh, uh, occupying the, this, this, this region. Uh, they would be, uh, I mean, extinct, extinct uh, because of disease and because of violence and, and other reasons. So they found uh, three, three non-indigenous uh, ladies in the, in, the, in the tribe and also João. And as João was quite young at the time, they, they kind of uh, believed that uh, he would be able to readapt um, to his original family at Luciara, which is the place, the small town where he was taken from. So uh, in this film, Tinia uh, goes, travels with me in search of these this, this stories. And he talks to people who met, who, who knew uh, João. And, uh, and so this, this, this kind of just two stories that, that's mixed together. And at the end, uh, I think uh, Tinia is, um, I don't know if to could be say inspired by it, but uh, I think there is some kind of uh, reflection about this this uh, this place in between two cultures, because I think, but I'm not sure, but um, and, uh, when 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 we leave one country, one one culture to to enter another culture, uh, somehow we 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 get in. A, in the, in the third chore, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's, that's if I may continue, uh, that brings yeah. to, the, to the, 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 the question of uh, being be between two, two, yeah. two cultures. And, uh, and also it ties in nicely to another question, which is why did you choose that title? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I was born in France and my parents were French, but I was raised in Rio, in Brazil, in Rio. So um, I had a kind of a very strong uh, um, uh, cultural form, uh, formation from, from my parents, but also I, I went to Brazilian school and so I, I had this kind of uh, feeling of, of belonging to, uh, to France and, and to Brazil. Uh, and uh, I, I, at some point, I studied in France, but I, I, I decided to, to to come back to Brazil, and I'm living here from since uh, 2001. And uh, and I think that's that's why somehow I was sensible uh, about this 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 topic. Um, but. I mean, it's when I when I started doing research about uh, the drone story. I think I, I I got contact with a with a, uh, um, a, a history that I didn't know before. The, the indigenous uh, culture. The there are so many tribes in Brazil. There are so many different languages. Uh, so there was a wonderful, you know, um, mine of culture, and and and, uh, and I think I got really. Uh, inspired and seduced by this, this uh, richness. Um, and, uh, and that's why I think I, I got interested in and made this movie as well. And the, ter the third short, um, there is this, uh, this uh, conto, I don't know how to say this. Short story. Short story by Gracilian Ramos, which is- João, uh, Gu João Guimarães Rosa. Uh, João Guimarães Rosa, sorry. 
which is a wonderful uh, Brazilian writer. And um, I, I, I read it a, a very long time ago. And uh, that was a, that's a very hard, tough question because everybody was saying, oh, but everybody's going to talk about the, 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 the story. And, and I tried really hard to find another title, you know, but <laughs> at the end, I mean, I said, well, the, the third short. And I think it, it got a different meaning from the, the short story because I think as, as far as I remember, the, 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 the story was about a father who, who went away who took a, a, a canoe and went in the river and was kind of absent father and metaphorical uh, story about, I don't know, death, maybe. Um, and so the third shower in this case is more about, you know, this, um, this place where you, you, you belonging, uh, this belonging to a place which is not really anchored in, in one culture specifically. And I think it's very contemporary, uh, maybe it's a very, a very contemporary feeling because um, as you, maybe you, you know, you are in another country and you learn to the language and the culture and, and you get you know, uh, um, inspired by it. So uh, I think people can really relate to this feeling, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know I did, and I know at least Barbara did from her question. Yeah, and you know, so just to, at the time I, I read a very, uh, a very important uh, text about uh, Eduardo Vieira de Castro, which is a Brazilian thinker, uh, uh, and he, 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 he kind of showed how the the, the indigenous culture was uh, always moving. It's not a, a fixed. Uh, entity you know it's it's always changing and adapting and this shows the how powerful uh, this culture is because after 500 years more than 500 years they're still here you know uh, resisting and, and 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 preserving their their culture and their territories uh, and i think there's a lot of it's it's interesting to to think about that you know as well and uh, what what does it mean to be indigenous i'm i'm not in the right place to to answer to that you know but I think there's something there that is that is important today because people used to say, oh, you know, if the, this indigenous guy have a cell phone, he's not indigenous anymore. Um, no, you know, it's it's, it's wrong. I mean, um, they have the, their culture is is evolving and uh, it's so complex. So I, I guess the the, the, the third shore somehow is this this place which is not really defined, you know. But that still is rich, and uh, in the in the case of Tinian, nowadays he lives in his his uh, village. He's very happy. I mean, he's perfectly re readapted, and uh, that's it. Uh huh. And I think you also answered just answered another one of Barbara's questions. Uh, she was asking, uh, at the end of the movie, he left on a trip did he stay? I think she was referring to Tinia, and I think you confirmed that Tinia now lives in the tribe, in the tribe. He did stay yeah. in the tribe, right? Yeah, at the end of the movie, he was like, uh, sure, you know, was convinced that he, he had made the good choice and he really wanted to go to his, and, and right after the shooting, he, he went back to his tribe and he's still there, you know. Is. And we, 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 I think someone asked if we have contact. We, we still have contact quite often. Uh, and uh, he's now working with uh, health care, you know. Uh, uh -huh. he, he did uh, uh, studies about uh, plants, uh, medicine, and uh, he's now working in his tribe. He has a, a little son. Uh -huh. uh, that's it. Nice. So we still have uh, many questions to answer. Uh, these came from uh, Jesus Iniguez. Uh, was there another aspect of Tinia's life that you wanted to have covered, or João's life for that matter, you wanted to have covered uh, in the film and you did not? Um, well, you know, there is some, I mean, uh... Some people uh, in Luciara, which is the place where he lived, uh, know his story. Uh, it's a very old story. And uh, 
there is some, uh, I mean, Orlando Villas Boas, one of the Villas Boas brothers, wrote about this, this his story as well. Uh, but it's curious because it's kind of sometimes it's quite difficult to, to know the exact dates, you know, and more details about his story. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but not really, you know, I think it's, I, I, I really um, um, talked about, um, not talked about, but uh, I think the film uh, went to the point that was interesting in his, in his mm -hmm. trajectory. From, right. from this uh, identity perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus also wanted to know uh, what kind of difficulties that you had making the film. Uh, ma making the film during the, the, the production? I guess. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it was, it was a really wonderful experience. You know, we had a small crew and uh, everything went fine. We had a funding from Brazilian government at the time. It was a more wishful to help uh, artists. Uh, and uh, there was one, one, one question we, we really wanted to, to, to deal with properly was because when you want to, sh to shoot film in a, the Xingu reservation, you have to have um, uh, the, the, the authorizations you know, from FUNAI, which is the government uh, institution that regulates this kind of matters. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was difficult because there was a lot of bu bureaucracy uh, and it took a while to, to get to the right persons and almost before, a few days before the shooting, we still didn't have the authorization. Mm -hmm. And we had all, all planned and everybody read, ready to, to, to go to the shooting. Mm -hmm. And that, that was hard, you know. And uh, I, it's interesting because when we, we first met the uh, 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 Bebingo Cre, Kayapo, Kayapo leaders uh, like Bejai, um, they were very um, Suspicious, how do you say, uh, desconfiados, I don't know. Suspicious. Suspicious, yeah. Suspicious, yeah. Uh, but, but for good reasons, you know, because uh, there are so many people doing, uh, I mean, uh, shooting there, uh, writing articles, uh, write, writing uh, university uh, thesis, you say, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so it took a while as well to, to reassure them, to explain exactly what we were wanting to, to, to do, you know. And, and that was interesting as well. It was a kind of difficulty, but it was nice. It, was, it, it felt natural because this was a, the, the whole process of, you know, getting closer to them. And, and it was wonderful because uh, after a while, they, they kind of opened all the, they wanted to show of, show us uh, things and they invited us to meet Haoni in, in, the, mm -hmm. in his village, you know. Um, at the end, we felt that they were really glad as to, to kind of go back to Juan's uh, past and memory. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was a kind of difficulty. But apart from that, you know, it was really just wonderful, wonderful experience. And I think it would be nice to have a Tinia uh, point of view, but I, I mean, as far as I know, he was, it was important to him, him as well, you know, it was meaningful. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, for our American audience, uh, Fabian just mentioned uh, that they got to meet uh, Haoni. Uh, Haoni is a chief and an activist, perhaps the most uh, famous and uh, strong Dramatic. figure and has been like that for about two decades going yeah. on to three decades uh, in yeah. Brazil. So uh, the fact that uh, they were taken to meet that person is really significant. It's a, it's a sign of the trust they were able to win uh, from uh, the people they wanted to film. Great. Uh, so, uh, also uh, a question from Jesus, uh, what did you, you learn the most and like complimentary, what did you want the audience to learn the most from the film? 
Well, you know, I think the learning um, started a long time before the, the, the film. You know, I think this, this whole, this long process of doing research and meeting and being with Tinya and uh, I mean, the, 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 the film was only the kind of uh, the one part of this process of learning, I think. Uh, and um, yeah, I think, you know, it's, I, I learned so many things about uh, indigenous and how, how terrible uh, the, the past, uh, how, how terrible it was to the indigenous people in Brazil since the colonization period. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there was a, I don't know, maybe 90% of the population was extinct. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's enormous, it's unbelievable, you know, and how, how this diversity survived and how, how important it is to have a, a, a preserved territory uh, so that they can keep their traditions. And I mean, there's a, a whole kind of uh, aggressive, uh, not propaganda, but you know, the government nowadays is, is, is kind of questioning uh, their relation to nature, meaning that they, they, they want to be like any Brazilian. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, there are some of them they, they want to and they can. I mean, uh, it's very complex, but you know, this very important for me to understand how, how important, how, how intertwined uh, nature and, and, and these people are, you know. I mean, you can't really distinguish them. They are nature. I mean, they are being nature. They are, um, and I always. I mean, I can only see it from outside, you know. But I think it would be nice if, uh, because there is so so much misunderstanding about their their, their culture and about the, the meaning mm -hmm. of it, and and it's 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 a shame because you see today they are talking about you know mining, uh, like in the Anomami territory, and uh, and. The, it's, it's, it's really a shame. And when you see a wonderful book that Davi Kopenawa, which is a leader of the Yanomami people, he wrote like a wonderful, wonderful book about telling his, so many aspects of his, his, his culture and, uh, and how it's important to see nowadays that they, they kind of, they are seeing what's going on as uh, about the climate change. You know, we are, we are starting maybe to talk about that now. And, uh, and when you, you get close to the indigenous people, you, you see how, how they, they, they are, I think they're, they're, they're understanding what's going on, you know. Uh, I mean, there could be so many things to say, but I think that's, that's the, the mm -hmm. main. So uh, again, for our American audience, I just, uh, I'm just gonna throw in some facts here. Uh, so uh, to help you get uh, more information about the, the whole issue, right? Uh, uh, this uh, reservation, uh, it's a national park. It's called Parque Nacional do Xingu. It was only formed in 1961. So it was only in 1961 that the, these indigenous, uh, indigenous populations got their land, uh, you know, fully entitled and officially recognized as uh, having a right uh, to that land. And we are talking about 27,000 square kilometers, which translates to uh, 10,000 and a half square miles. So we're talking uh, about a huge uh, extension, territorial extension. Uh, which has been contested from the very beginning, and it's being even more contested by the current far right government, uh, which does not believe in preserving land for the indigenous people, and wants, uh, you, you know, if, uh, if you watched the movie, uh, there are signs of uh, what's encroaching on these populations. You see silos, uh, that's silos for soybeans. 
Uh, you see uh, at the entrance of uh, some small city that they visit, there's a sign that says Capital do Boi Gordo, that's the capital of cattle. So soybeans, cattle, and more recently mining is what the current government would like to see happening uh, in that land. It's a highly, you know, it's a totally hot topic uh, in Brazil right now. And those populations are under risk of uh, uh, losing their land uh, under this uh, current government. Uh, and uh, the work that the Villas Boas brothers did was also very helpful uh, for air traffic. You know, their pioneer work, uh, which was very protective uh, of the Indian populations, the native populations, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it was also at the service of the government. And it is due to their work over decades that Brazil now has four military bases in that land, which are like the backbone of air traffic control over that very important area for both uh, domestic air traffic as well as transcontinental uh, air traffic. So, you know, it's not only uh, about, not only about uh, the agricultural expansion, but also about uh, national security uh, interests. Uh, and uh, I think uh, I think there's uh, another question from uh, Jesus Fabian. Uh, you told us uh, what you learned, but he was also asking, what did you want the audience to learn from the film? Well, you know, it's um, it's so hard to. <laughs> To, to make a film, no? <laughs> and, and, and I mean, um, we kind of discover during the process, you know, during the editing, we, 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 we are still learning what is the, the movie is about, you see. So um, I didn't have a very clear um, idea of a message, but at least um, I, I and the editor and, and Tinya, we had some idea about this really trying to to convey to to translate what it is to be between two worlds you know um, and uh, what try to 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 help understanding this feeling and what it what it can mean about sometimes pain and you know and confusion um, I don't know, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to say actually really a, a clear message, mm -hmm. uh, but I think at the end, it's, it's um, you know, we had the, uh, when I started editing, I, 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 I thought about a very complex uh, narration and uh, putting some more uh, intellectual thoughts about all this. And at the end, the more, uh, clear the, the narration was, the, the better it was to, to let the film talk from himself, you know. And I think at the end, it, it, it's, for me, it's, uh, at least, I feel that it shows the, 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 the force, the power of this, this, um, this culture, because João could, could, I mean, he went back to his original family, but he, he didn't want to stay there. He preferred to go back to the Mbengo Cre, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, as well as Tinia, at the end, he decides to go back to his tribe. So there is something there, you know, that we, we, it's, it's, we have to think about that, you know? If, if we had the chance, for instance, to live, um, I don't know, one, two years in a, in a tribe and to, to really have access to this, to this tradition and to the feeling of being nature, to live very simply. Uh, I mean, I had the occasion in another situation to, to, to spend a long time in, in the tribe. And maybe we, we, we would question a lot of things in, the, in, the, in, the, in our cities, in our culture. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think maybe the film talks a bit about that, you know, the, how strong the, that is and how fragile as well. We, we, it's not, we cannot uh, say, oh, they are so, 
I mean, they can disappear. They do. I mean, so many things have been lost. Uh, so it's a, it's a balance between you know resistance and and, and fragility as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we also had a question from Tatiana, uh, and she was asking, uh, what are ways that we could be more inclusive of indigenous culture being in a big city as we are? How can we advocate for those stories to continue to be told and honored? Well, I don't know. It's it's a very interesting question. I I don't know this, the United States, but well, there's a many uh, indigenous people in uh, there. And uh, in Brazil, I think that one of the the, the, the very important things is, is the, the the media. Uh, the, the mainstream media doesn't really go deep into this, uh, you know, these cultures. Uh, it's always very superficial. Um, and so I think it would be important to have one of the, 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 the things that could be done, I mean, is to, to really uh, go deeper uh, in content in, of what, what people are showing in the, the mainstream media. Um, I think as well, you know, it's very hard to, to know how, how can you understand uh, indigenous traditions and, and, and if, 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 people in the, if people in the cities have no contact with nature, I mean, I think we, one thing is, is linked to the other. And so maybe, I don't know, how, how could, we, could we encourage kids to, to have contact with, with nature more, of, more often and in, maybe in a different way, you know? Um, that doesn't mean that you have to do like uh, eco tourism, you know, and go see, uh, go bring like uh, buses into the, the tribe, you know, and the villages. That's not good. But uh, it starts, I mean, I think it starts with information, you know, good information, mm -hmm. uh, complexity, to, to accept complexity and not to, to put a mask and to put a, you know, a name on and something. You know, I think there's more than 160 languages, different languages in Brazil. That's, uh, that's incredible, so, so rich, you know, there's so many little uh, countries and communities in, inside Brazil territory. Um, so it's a very complex uh, question, but I think, you know, uh, little by little, it's uh, to help people at the school uh, to, to understand better. Uh, I have two daughters, and uh, uh, one one of them was studying about uh, <clears throat> indigenous culture, you know, and it was interesting. I, I was very happy to see how, I mean, how this complexity was was brought to, to her, you know. Um, so I think yeah, that's 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 another possibility, you know, to help at school people to understand, to bring maybe more people like Tinia to talk about, you know. And it's so it's so amazing. Kids are just like mesmerized, like, like hypnotized by when he starts uh, talking about his culture because it's so beautiful, mm -hmm. so poetic. You know, it's a it's a way of seeing the world. It's so rich. Uh, it's a shame to lose that. You know, and and people and people from the cities can relate to that so easily. You know, I see. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fabian, I'm I'm gonna uh, ask a question of my own. Uh, which has to do with uh, these uh, attacks uh, on this culture. Uh, I feel like, you know, the native people, like there's no mercy because in the beginning it was the Catholic church, mm. right? That's <clears throat> how Brazil was uh, started, right? Yeah all the, the Jesuits uh, and the effort of uh, uh, converting uh, those populations. Yeah. Uh, and now it's the evangelical churches. Uh, at some point in the film, there's uh, some Christian uh, ceremony, mm -hmm. uh, which I think, I'm not sure, but it looked like uh, some uh, evangelical ceremony. So uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, what did you find when you were filming uh, of that influence in those populations? Well, you no, know, it's uh, the evangelical church is really, um, uh, 
in rooted. I don't know if it's the, the right word mm. uh, in Brazil now nowadays, and it's growing, growing because they are they have a lot of media and and sometimes and somehow also um, they're good churches, evangelical churches. Of course, we cannot be like so so radical. Of course, but they are. Um, at a lot of levels, I think they're they're filling a gap, you know, from the government, from you know, institutions, mm -hmm. because they're they're they are present. They are some some sometimes giving assistance where where you don't have assistance. So it's a very very uh, complex issue. But um, in in uh, in the in the Kayapu, in the Shingu as a whole, I don't really I can't really say, you know. But at, uh, mm -hmm. with the the Membengo Kre, with the Kayapu people. Uh, they are not really uh, present. They 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 are not getting into because uh, you know the Kappa people are very uh, very um, strong. I mean, very uh, uh, clear. Very uh, uh, how to say? Eles têm muita clareza of 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 the the, the importance of their, their culture. They are proud of their culture. They they have it very clear about the importance of their culture. Their yeah, I mean, yeah. but I had I had an experience with the Guajajara in in Maranhão State. Uh, I, I spent one month there with a, a German uh, director. Was uh, following the the guardians of the forest, which are uh, that threatened. I mean, they're they're really. Doing a, a, a dangerous and incredible work to, to try to protect their land, you know, against illegal loggers and, and cattle raisers and, and uh, ranchers, and and there that there was different. There there were many many evangelics uh, mm -hmm. that were already converting some of the the guys in the in the tribe, and it's 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 uh, complex because there is such a community. Uh, sense, you know, community spirit, and if someone is this in this community uh, turns into another tradition, he's still a member of the community. So it's a very perverse, you know, and very aggressive. They like when we we dance uh, before Christmas to to give uh, little gifts to the kids, you know, and who believes in God? Raise your hand, you know. It was, and so you know. Uh, there was kind of irony. We, uh, I was talking with the chief there, uh, uh, Kasiki. He said, "Well, let, let them, you know, believe that they are converting, but they will go away, you know." But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, little by little, it's not so good. So, uh, and 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 and, the, and with this governor in particular, in Funai, at at one point, I don't, I'm not sure he's still there, but the the, the one of the directors of Funai uh, was an ev evangelical. Uh, guy and he thought, oh, let's let's do contact. Let's bring missionaries to the to the mm -hmm. uh, to the uncontacted uh, indigenous people who are in uh, I don't know I don't remember where exactly, but you know that's that's it's horrible. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable that the Funai guy from Funai uh, can can say that so loudly, yeah. you know, in the yeah. press and uh, so uh, nowadays, you know, it's really hard, really hard because there are. They are occupying like strategical uh, um, um, places in the, in the government, in the institutions, mm -hmm. and and you know I think Bolsonaro has a very clear. Uh, I mean, some people say he's dumb, you know, but he's, he has a very clear idea of what he wants. He wants to 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 open the, the Amazon you know, for us. He wants to mine it. To to he wants to to let people mine the, the indigenous territories. Uh, and he's very uh, perverse because, uh, for instance, was, there were these big fires in, in two, 2019 and 2000 this year as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, deforestation is rising uh, very uh, strongly. And uh, he, he was questioning, for instance, Rowney uh, authority uh, publicly. So he, he called a, 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 a girl from a from, uh, tribe from the Shingu who was saying, ah, no, now we have to talk about the indigenous people from the 21st century. Okay, but what does it mean? You know, what? It's so superficial, but it's so perverse because it starts dividing people and creating the illusion that, you mean, the indigenous people will suddenly have access to all uh, material uh, goods, you know, from our society mm -hmm. and that they will earn money with mining. It's not true, it's not true. Oh, it's, it was we see here, 
in Minas Gerais, the state where I live, the there were two dam breakings that killed so many people, yes. you know, and, and they're there, they're still mining, they're, nothing changed. The yeah. communities that, that are living just beside these this mining complexes, they're not having they're not having almost benefit. They're, Many people work there. That's the, the problem because the, some, somehow the money comes from this mining activity, of course. Right. But you know, all the money goes away. Where I don't know. China, I don't know. You know, not in Brazil. So it would be the same in the indigenous territory. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, it's really. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm really uh, revolting. Is a, is a word. Yeah. It's, yeah. A and, it's a shame. And it, and it's not a new story anyway. We know what yeah. happened in Carajás, Serra yeah. Pelada, in the state yeah. of Pará in the 1980s. Exactly. Uh, it wasn't a good outcome and it didn't lift people out of poverty. That's uh, exactly. it's kind of by design. Uh, we have some other uh, questions here. Uh, Michelle uh, wanted, to, wanted us to know that we have many indigenous languages in the United States, but depending on the state and its funding, the churches and assimilation, <clears throat> Uh, the dominant languages are, and Michelle, please excuse if I mispronounce them, Cree, Seminole, uh, Cherokee, Creek, Lakota, Chippewa, Sioux, Navajo, and Apache. That's so, wonderful. Uh, and uh, uh, Jesus is asking if you have any other films uh, uh, about indigenous culture, uh, which we can purchase or view. Oh, there, there are a few. Uh, you know, there is a, 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 a director, uh, Vincent Carelli. Uh, he he created, uh, I think it's an NGO uh, called uh, Vídeo nas Aldeias. So he he helps, encourages uh, indigenous um, many tribes to 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 make their own films. Uh, and he, he directed a very important uh, film called, um, uh, ah, I forgot now. It's about the Guarani. There's, there's, there's a, mm -hmm. there's a conflict about lands. Uh, and so he, I, I've tried to remember before. And uh, so that's, that's a good director to follow, you know, he's, he, he, he's uh, linked to very, to many projects of, of uh, films about indigenous culture. Uh, mm -hmm. There is, um, um, all, all the names are getting out of my mind now, but um, Andrea Tonacci uh, documentary about a similar story of a, guy, of a, a kid who went out of the, his tribe and was found by an indigenous, Brazilian indigenous, Serra da Desordem. It's an amazing film, mm -hmm. really, really nice film. Uh, there is uh, As Hiper Mulheres uh, from, uh, um, I, I think it's linked to Vigil Nas Aldeias as well, this film. Uh, I mean, I can, uh, after the session, I can send to you maybe a list of films. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm putting everything in the chat uh, as you were talking, uh, uh, all those names and titles. And yeah. uh, I asked, uh, Lua to transmit them uh, to our audience. Okay. okay. Wonderful. I would like to um to also say something. You know, the, there are so many indigenous languages in Brazil, and uh, which particular one is the one that the Carajás uh, have, and which one we hear in the in the film. Uh. Well, Carajás is a tribe from uh, the Araguaia River. Mm -hmm. uh, they are different from the, the Mebengo Cré, the Kayapo. Uh, Carajás is a G, G uh, linguistic, uh, I don't know how to say in English, uh, but it's different from Kayapo. Mm -hmm. uh, Kayapo, I, I don't know if it's the sorry, exact term, yeah. but Kayapo is the, the Kayapo language. Uh, Kayapo is the language called Kayapo too? Yeah, yeah. You you know now. I'm not not really sure, but I think yes. Okay. Uh, and um, in and uh, for, for instance, uh, the the Tinya language uh, is uh, is a different language, and I think it's the last language from the the northeast tribes. You know, 
many of them lost their language. So the, 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 the Funio language, which has a specific name, uh, but I don't, uh, I don't remember exactly. And, and they, they are, I mean, they're one of the, the, the sole uh, tribes in Northeast that still have their language. And it's amazing, you know, there's like words for mother, it's the beginning of my uh, scene. Uh, father is the beginning of uh, walking. House is the place to be happy. And so mm -hmm. and it's really, really amazing. I have a, a, another question. Um, Juan's name in, in two of the interviews that I was reading, reading and uh, when I was reading about uh, you, one, in one place they call him Juan da Luz and another place yeah. Juan Cramura. Is Juan Cramura his Indian name? Yeah. And, yeah. And is it Cramura? Does that mean Daluz? No, no, no. Okay. I was wondering if it was really. Because Daluz, uh, the founder of Luciara, which is Lucio Daluz, ah. was a, a very uh, big family that of settlers that occupied uh, a few places uh, along the, the, the Araguaia River. You know? okay. They are from the Northeast as well. Okay. Uh, so João da Luz is his uh, Christian name, and Cramura is the, the Indian, yeah, Cayapon name. Okay. Uh, uh, I was I was very moved by the moment at the end of the film where you, uh, Fabian, finally say, "This is where I, I'm seeing João for the first time," because yeah. he he's not in the documentaries that the Villas Boas brothers filmed. No. He's not in that footage. And then you finally get his ID, right? Yeah, yeah. You are seeing for the first time. And uh, I think if I saw it right, João died illiterate. Yeah. Because, you know, in, in his ID card, in the place where you would sign the ID card, I yeah. can see like the end of something that says, uh, I don't know, an alphabet, or I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Was that the case? That's yeah. the case, yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, it was, it was interesting as well to, to think about the meaning of archive footage, because the, the archives, you see, we had, it was so difficult to, to find the, the original 16 millimeters uh, uh, film, and we didn't find it. I, I mean, I searched mm. I mean, so many places. It, it was uh, one of the sons of Orlando who had a, a DVD, you know, and he wow. said, oh, I gave the film to the Cinemateca Brasileira, but didn't find there. So we used a kind of, you know, not so good copy of the, the, the 16 millimeters film. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, when you think of it, I mean, it was, uh, um, it's, it, it, when, when they shoot the, the, when they film the shoot is an interesting word as well to do to that because the first images is a kind of uh, before they die because it's the first contact and it's the time when they get the diseases, you know. And I think the, the Villas Bros brothers were criticized about that. I mean, they have an important uh, role because we don't know what would have happened if they didn't contact these tribes. But anyway, many, many people died after mm -hmm. the contact. So it's, 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 um, it's, it's crazy to see how these images is the last image of so many people who, who died just after, uh -huh. right? And uh, Megaron, who is the, the right hand, of, uh, is the uh, sobrinho of, of uh, Haoni. Nephew. Yeah, nephew, Haoni's nephew. He, he says that in the film. He says, oh, after that, many people die. All these people you see in the film, they died, many kids, you know? And I had to flee with my father. We, we ran away to another place. Uh, so to survive, uh, so we, you know, so it's, it's so it's so delicate to use these kind of images as well. You know, you have to be very careful how mm -hmm. to use images because, and in the Kayapo tradition, uh, you you don't keep the belongings of, of the belongings of the dead. You know, you bury everything with. So we are kind of doing something forbidden as well, mm -hmm. showing these images and keeping mm -hmm. the João Cramura's ID. You Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it was moving as well because of that, you know, to have access to his picture, because we were thinking, oh, we will never, <laughs> never see his picture, but mm -hmm. there, there he was. Wow, yeah. So uh, Michelle wa uh, also wanted to let us know that uh, when she listed uh, the tribes here, 
she forgot the Chickasaw tribe, which is very dominant in the US. And her great, great grandmother is a Chickasaw. Mm -hmm. nice. Wonderful. That's interesting too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to know um, if there is any, any um, movement to bring some, we, we talked about this yesterday when we discussed uh, with Christine, the director of um, Amazonia, who mm. despertar da Florestania, the awakening of Flor Florestania. And uh, what is, um, are people doing anything to bring these films to schools? Because we have to educate the young people about this part of our history. This is Brazil too. <clears throat> and uh, I think we need to, to bring that to schools. Is there any effort being made in that, you know, in that sense? Well, you know, uh, nowadays in Brazil, I think this kind of effort from a federal perspective, I think absolutely not. Not gonna happen. Or not, yeah. not gonna happen, yeah. From the, I mean, municipalities and states, um, I mean, they, they are even changing, I think, the, 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 the books that are going to, to be sent to school in the next generations. So how, how is this issue going to be uh, uh, um, oh, approached, right? Uh, I, I, I'm, I don't know, I, to, be, to, to tell you the truth, I, I don't, I'm not aware of, you know, uh, projects of showing this kind of films in the schools. You know. Here in Minas Gerais, for instance, uh, the, the Federal University uh, is very open to, to uh, indigenous people. They have few students there and they do a lot of uh, meetings, you know, f with uh, uh, indigenous uh, leaders from all, all around Brazil. Uh, and they have a nice, very nice festival, which is called Foreign Doc, uh, which which is very uh, focused on this this kind of uh, on these these issues, you know. Uh, so there are always many films uh, being presented about uh, indigenous and from indigenous people as well. Uh, uh, but I, I I couldn't tell really. Because every, I think every state is different. Every municipality maybe deals with it differently. Uh, I know in Rio, for instance, Tinia uh, worked in many, many uh, private and public schools quite often. But uh, after a while, he, they, he didn't do that anymore. He wasn't invited, so I don't know what happened. Uh, another thing that... Um has been on my mind since I was reading some of the things that um, this film won the Taiwan International Ethnographic Film Festival in 2017, the prize. Yeah. And uh, is that, uh, was it shown there and how was the reception of the film there? Uh, you're talking about uh, Para? The, it was it's the first... P-I-E-F-F. -E is the uh, name of the, the that I read, you know, in Taiwan because yeah, there was I, Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan. I no, it, it didn't have a prize there, you know. It was a, a honorable mention in uh, in this uh, ethnography festival in Para, uh -huh. uh, but in Taiwan, unfortunately, I, I I couldn't. I mean, I wasn't invited personally to get there. Yeah, well, I, but, I read in one of the the articles that I was reading about that it was. Won yeah. the Taiwan International Ethno Ethnographic Film Festival. Okay. Won a uh, prize, but he didn't say what kind of prize. Maybe I'm not aware of it. I'm, I'm well, maybe. I know that now. <laughs> yeah. I'll check more and I'll let you know what. Yeah, I'm I've checked as well. Yeah. yeah. In, so, it's interesting because it has the, um, how do you call, the laurels. Yeah, that, that, that was. In the statue, yeah. Okay. In the middle. I'll, I'll send that to you. Okay. And then uh, I thought it was very interesting because I said, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I wanted that. to know what, what did the audience in Taiwan thought of it, you know. It, it was in a, I think it's organized by the university, right? Ah, that could be. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is. Okay. In, in, it's part of a university program. Okay. 
So uh, we got an, a new comment from Jesus, uh, who says again how he loved the film. He absolutely loved the film, and he would like to buy it. How, if somebody is interested in buying a copy, how can they do it? Um, well, this, uh, there is a, a platform in, uh, I, I have to, to send you as well the contacts, the, the, okay. the link, uh, and, and there's a, the distributor uh, here in Brazil, which has a, a copy, I mean, can send a copy. Uh, nowadays, we, we don't talk about copies anymore. Physical, yes. Everything is going virtual. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can I can send it to you. I don't know if it's possible to. Yeah, just to send it to me, and I can contact. pass it to to Jesus. Uh, I okay. know him quite well. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, as we say in Brazil, o papo tá bom. We have been talking for over one hour now. Wow. <laughs> so uh, I would like to ask our audience uh, once again, if anybody has uh, any other co comments uh, or questions to our director. I think this, it, for me, it was an incredible movie really to see the reality this and the the other film that we had about the amazonia you know despertada florestania i'm sure that you you have seen it they really show a different reality of brazil that people who live in the big cities are not you know don't get in tune with and yeah. we need to because that's our country too and uh and there has to be something that we can um, and this is one of the reasons why we did choose it, uh, the two films, because we needed to show it more. We needed to have people see it and bring awareness that there is this other reality there and we cannot ignore it. You know, yeah. it is there, we cannot ignore it. And um, so hopefully, and I think some of the universities, because the festival, when it is presential, it's presented mostly on the, most of the universities are key, uh, here in the, and many of them are watching it too, uh, the festival. And uh, I really think that this is one way, that's why I asked about if it is shown in the schools there and everything, because we need to bring these things to the plate and start discussing and, and see if we make some movement so that the government start listening you know it's not just their way of wanting money out of uh, you know of the places where they go and mine and do whatever and uh, cut the this government Adiani, yeah. forget it well the next government maybe yeah well yeah i agree i agree with you that this government we cannot expect much but we need to no. start the movements now to get people to be aware of it and hopefully something will come up a little, you know, yeah. a few years people from now. Learn to yeah. vote. And, uh, you know, even though, even though we live in the cities, I, I thought that a very profound thing that Christiane yesterday, the director of Amazonia, um, said yesterday, said, you know, we live here in the city and we think, oh, uh, it's the forest is far away, that's not nothing. But we are, we are the forest. We are part of that land, we are part yeah. of it. So we need to be involved and in, interested in something like that. And sometimes we have uh, our children, we, they, they grow up without even knowing anything about in Brazil, unless it is brought to school and we can, that's why I think schools are still a very big vehicle where we have to start introducing this kind of thing. Yeah, uh, definitely. Movies and uh, it's very, very, very important. Sure. And nowadays, you know, it's quite clear that uh, from, I don't know, a guy from Amazon, which is an NGO that uh, use satellite images to, to see the first station. It's clear that where, where there are tribes, you know, where there's an indigenous territory, uh, 
there, there are preserved lands. Uh, so they know how we have, a, we, are, we are starting to, to have to learn with them how to keep forests alive, mm -hmm. you know, because I think, you know, there's this denial and Trump now is gone, hopefully. Uh, so, um, I mean, it's, it's a scientific fact that uh, the climate is, is, is changing. And, and uh, I think we have to start, it's, it's for us as well. It's not for the indigenous people only, you know, we are all concerned. Exactly, and, uh, exactly, it is. The pandemic as well is a kind of sign, a very diplomatic sign from nature that, you know, be, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, indigenous people really, really, really important in Brazil. They say that 13% of territory for 1% of population. Uh, but you know, uh, hopefully, yes, there's so, so much land for, for these people. And, yeah. uh, there's so much land with, with private sectors, you know, transnational companies yeah. as well. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so much lands in Brazil, uh, it's, it's, it's not bad. And they do so much damage to the environment. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> All right. So how do we wind this down? Well, I really would like to thank you, Fabian. It is r such a pleasure to have you with us. Thank and, you very much. Uh, to enlighten us a little bit more about, you know, this incredible project that you... What is your... I have a question. What is your next project? What are you working on now? <laughs> Well, you know, the chances of, of founding a film here in, in Brazil now are very, because the same is happening with culture, you know, it's uh, the Ancini, the, the industry of, of cinema and, and audiovisual is being dismantled. Uh, it's shocking. I mean, stop everything. So hopefully I have a, a, a French produ produce, producing company, uh, which is uh, helping me a lot. So I have a project which is uh, kind of the idea of talking about the past, you know, and uh, uh, there's a, a guy in uh, Mato Grosso which uh, uh, helped uh, a small population to fight against, uh, um, how to say, latifundio. Um, uh, against uh, uh, large-scale farming. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it was during the dictatorship, you know, yeah. and uh, I'm doing a, a parallel, a kind of mirror, uh, film with this situation and uh, and someone I can't say the name because he's in a in a delicate um, um, juridic juridical uh, situation legal legal situation yes and so but it's a guy who is fighting for uh, uh, Saint Terras people that don't have because land in the Amazon <laughs> you know and uh, that's it but God knows when when it will be possible to. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I wish you a wonderful, a really good luck with it. You know, you. you can achieve and, and accomplish that too. Um, and Claudia, I want to thank you so much for moderating this session for us. My pleasure. Uh, which is really great. And uh, in the audience in particular, which I hope you really enjoyed. Um, and uh, before we close, I would like to mention to all of you in the audience, don't forget we have our silent auction going on, which is, helps us bring these films and these directors to us. And uh, on a virtual way this year, hopefully next year we can bring some of them presentially too. But um, I think maybe the virtual reaches a new and different audience too, which is very nice. And. Um, we uh, next and tomorrow we have another incredible, incredible movie. Um, it's also a documentary, Menino 23, Infancias Perdidas no Brasil, um, uh, The Lost uh, Children of Brazil, which is incredible movie too. So I hope you come and watch us and talk to Belisario, who is the director of that. Don't forget also that we have a voting going on for the films of Mostra. That's another thing that is very important. Vote because these films are just incredible and uh, we'll have some awards for them. So again, thank you all so much for being here with us and uh, in particular Fabian.
Thank, Thank you very much. So much. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you.